Hello everyone. On behalf of our team, including Phạm Ngọc Thạch, Ngô Tuyết Mai, Ngô Văn Giang, and me, d ặ n g Xuân Thu, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting us to make a presentation in the first teleconference on ICT in ELT in Vietnam today. In this presentation, we present part of the results of an empirical study on ICT use in foreign language teaching in Vietnamese higher education. We focus on the actual ICT use by the teachers and the factors which affect their use of ICT. There won't be time for questions and comments at the end of our presentation. In Vietnam, it is fair to say that the government has created the favorable legal framework for the ICT integration in ELT, and uh, there are two key documents here. The first one is Directive Number Fifty Five, and the second one is the Decision Number Fourteen Hundred, uh, both issued in the year two thousand and eight. ICT is seen as a very good tool to transform education quality. And um, in particular, um, the school year 2008-2009 was selected as the year of ICT in education. And Vietnam sets the target that by 2015, 100% of the university teachers will use ICT in their teaching. So you can see that ICT plays a very important role in education in Vietnam. Our case study institution is Hanoi University, or Hanu in short, a flagship university in English teaching in Vietnam. So far, Hanoi University has conducted many English courses for high-ranking officials of the Vietnamese government, and implemented many key projects for the Ministry of Education and Training in Vietnam. The university is well equipped with facilities. And during the time of the research in 2010, there were about 1,000 desktop computers, and most of them were located in 12 computer labs or in the main library. Before we move on, we like to state very clearly that in this study, the term ICT is used to describe the computer-based and the internet-related technologies. And computer-assisted language learning software applications. We don't deal with mobile devices. These are the two main research questions of our study, and also the key part of our presentation. Regarding the research methods, we apply the mixed methods approach to the study. We started with the uh, survey questionnaire. Uh, 116 EFL teachers took part in the survey, and 70% of them were females. They answered 28 questions. Most of the questions were the rating scale questions, and some of them were open-ended questions. Um, we interviewed 27 people, including university leadership, ICT experts, and ELT teachers. The theoretical framework of our study is the unified theory of acceptance and use of technology, developed by Van Gartesch and his team in 2003. There are four main constructs in this theoretical framework: uh, performance expectancy, meaning the benefits of the ICT; effort expectancy, meaning the ease of use of the ICT; social influence, and facilitating conditions. Those four main constructs are moderated by gender, age, experience, and voluntariness of use. Now, this is the key part of uh, our presentation. Uh, I like to start with uh, results about the ICT use by teachers. According to the frequency analysis, the teachers use ICT more in teaching listening and speaking, and then followed by writing, vocabulary, and reading. About 10% of the teachers use ICT in teaching interpreting and pronunciation. The next few slides are as examples of some resources that teachers use in teaching the major language skills. Uh, English Discoveries Online, EDO, for example, at uh, Hanoi University for the practice of all the four language skills. Then some good listening resources like the uh, ESL Cyber Listening Lab or the resources from the BBC channels, VOA. Uh, ABC teachers also use the um, uh, Windows Media Player to uh, especially go to the Play Speed settings 
to adjust the speed of the playback to suit the actual levels of the students. Some good speaking resources like the ESLdiscussions.com or the um, conversation questions for the ESLs and EFL classroom uh, or the website the ESLgoal.com. Uh, ELT teachers also find a lot of resources from YouTube or YouTube for Education or Teacher Tweet, a lot of the ins inspiring presentations in TED.com or the ISA.org. Or the teachers can exploit the resources from the open courseware uh, like the MIT Open Courseware website. Similar to the MIT Open Courseware is the EduNet Open Courseware in Vietnam, where the teachers can find a lot of uh, resources like the textbooks or e-learning websites, etc. And these are specific ICT tools that teachers use for lesson preparation. If we take a closer look at the main ICT tools for lesson preparation, we can see the pattern as follows. The teachers often search the internet for resources they want, uh, and then they download the resources from the internet. They use word processing to design the activities for the students, and prepare the PowerPoint presentation. Use email for communications with uh, other teachers or with students. Teachers use those tools more often because these are the contents of the ICT training courses organized by Hanoi University. Uh, because in the view of the teachers, uh, these ICT tools are very useful and easy to use. And these are the ICT tools that the ELT teachers use for classroom teaching. In the classroom, teachers use PowerPoint a lot to present the lesson to the class. And if uh, there is internet connection in the classroom, teachers may use the internet for demonstration of certain teaching points. And uh, they also use word processing, voice recording, and audio editing. 92.2% of the respondents said that they use ICT in the teaching. But we look at specific tools that they use in lesson preparation and classroom teaching we can see that their use is very basic. The ICT use is very basic, mainly PowerPoint word processing, and sometimes voice recording and audio editing, and that's it. And that leads us to the next question on the factors which affect the ICT use by teachers. Those factors can be grouped into inhibiting factors and facilitating factors. The factor analysis resulted in six inhibiting factors to ICT use. They are limited access, lack of ICT training, lack of ICT guidelines, technical problems, increased workloads, and lack of leadership support. If the teachers want to use the um, computer and internet, they have to book the computer lab in advance. In interviews, some teachers say that they have to uh, bring their own laptops and even the speakers to the classroom. Over the um, past two years, uh, the teachers receive about five to ten hours of ICT training on average. So it is not enough for them. And the contents of the ICT training courses at the university did not meet the needs of the teachers. And as a result, you see that teachers stick to the basic use of the ICT. And when we ask the university leadership, they all confirm that there is a guideline for the ICT use at the university. But when we, we ask the teachers, the classroom teachers, majority of them said that they have never seen such an ICT guideline. So the problem may lie in the dissemination of this uh, document to the teachers. And so the teachers lack the sense of purpose, lack the sense of direction in terms of ICT use in teaching and learning. Respondents also reported that the internet speed at the university was very slow and, um, and sometimes disconnected. And when the problem occur, the teachers have to contact the technicians and so wasting a lot of time of the lesson. Both teachers and students feel discouraged by the slow speed of the internet. 
Many teachers believe that ICT increase workload for them, and it's very time-consuming to use ICT in lesson preparation. Well, it is generally agreed that in order to prepare for one hour of teaching in the classroom, the teachers have to spend about three or four hours or more uh, at home uh, with the use of the ICT. Teachers also reported that they received the support from the university leadership in terms of policy, but in terms of uh, equipment and financial support, they don't receive much. As a public university, the university leadership cannot provide the financial incentives for the teachers to use ICT. They don't have budget. Apart from inhibiting factors, we identify four facilitating factors to ICT use, which are performance expectancies for the teachers, performance expectancies for the students, positive experiences, and effort expectancy. The teachers perceive that using ICT would improve their teaching performance, and they are aware of the benefits of the ICT. They can search the resources, extensive resources on the internet about different topics, about different skills, and those resources are diversified, fast, convenient, and up to date. So we don't have to convince the teachers about the benefits of the ICT. And teachers also perceive that using ICT would bring a lot of benefits for the students as well. For example, ICT would help students gain better results in their studies. ICT would help students understand the subjects more deeply, increase the study motivation for the students, promote the autonomous learning, uh, and enhance the employability for the students in the future. And most teachers also reported that they have had the um, positive experiences in using ICT. They have succeeded in using ICT in teaching and will continue using ICT in the future. And they believe that teaching with ICT is more enjoyable than teaching without ICT. In terms of the effort expectancy, um, most of the teachers reported that they found it easy to use the internet, the computer. But when we look at the um, actual ICT tools that the teachers use in lesson preparation and in classroom teaching, and we can see that um, the teachers here often refer to word processing, PowerPoint presentation, web browser, internet search engine, internet download, and, and that's it. And for them, these tools are easy to use. From the results of the uh, study, we would like to make three implications for practice in the future. And those implications focus on ICT guidelines, ICT incentives, and ICT training. Regarding the ICT guidelines, we think that the uh, senior leadership of the university need to develop ICT guidelines, which uh, provides the vision, the purpose of ICT use, with the clear steps and stages of implementation, and disseminate this document to all the staff in different ways. For example, talking about the ICT guidelines at the different meetings, uploading the document to the um, university website, or keeping at least a printed copy in each department, for example. Well, we know that the, as a public university, the university has a financial constraint. However, we think that the university leadership may develop uh, a regime of ICT incentives. For example, uh, public recognition for those teachers who are good at using ICT in their teaching or create some appropriate titles for them or sending them to different conferences and so that when they come back they can share the knowledge with other colleagues. About the ICT training, the university should use a bottom-up approach by asking teaching staff about the ICT skills which they find useful for their teaching uh, because t different teachers teach different subjects and they have different needs. And on that basis, uh, the university design uh, a yearly plan for ICT training and disseminate the plan to all the staff. And all ICT training workshops should be recorded and stored online so that the teachers can watch them over and over again in their own time and when they need them. And uh, we should make full use of the free online training videos such as the um, teachertrainingvideos.com.
And these are the key results of our study we would like to share with the audience here. And at this stage, we would like to thank uh, Dr. Howard Nicholas and Professor Raymond Lewis from La Trobe University for their academic guidance. And we also like to thank Hanu staff for their participation in this study. We'd like to share some useful ICT tools for language classrooms. And you can click on this link and download this document. And with that, we would like to leave our presentation here and happy to take any questions or comments from the audience. Thank you very much for the listening.